Baby frenzies and high gears, a world waits for the arrival of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's first child. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have kept quiet about the big day up until now, but we do know Prince Harry shortened his trip to the Netherlands on May 8th and 9th as the birth of the new royal nears. And joining us now, CBSN royal contributor, Victoria Arbiter. Vicky, you've got to break this down. When is she going to have this baby? That is the million dollar <laughs> question. Do you know the bookies in the UK, actually, they ceased all bets today because they said the conspiracy theorists have led them to believe that the baby might already be here. I don't believe that's the case. Buckingham Palace is not in the business of misleading. They did tell us in their announcement in early April that they would let us know when Meghan was in labour. Deeply personal, but they would let us mm. know that information. And of course, then once Harry and Meghan had had time to celebrate privately, they would let us know the baby had been born. Now, Buckingham Palace can't go back on that because if they did, they end up with egg on their face. So nobody would believe anything that they had to say from there on. So I think the conspiracy theorists, you know, they might think they've got this sorted, mm -hmm. but the world waits. Now, Meghan, from what we've heard, tell us if this is true, is really bucking a lot of royal tradition. Tell us what she's doing. I'm so glad you raised this because these so-called traditions that she's meant mm -hmm. to be breaking have sort of become traditions unwittingly. Mm. And the key one here is the fact that Meghan decided she doesn't want to do a photograph upon leaving the hospital, looking hair and makeup fabulous. She doesn't want to do that and we have to respect that. It is her wish. But this isn't really a, a denoted Tradition. It mm. really started in the fact that royals can't sneak in and out of hospital terribly easily. So once we know a royal is in hospital, of course the press congregates outside to capture the moment they leave. Uh, so actually, Meghan here is not breaking a tradition. I understand there has been disappointment in some quarters because, of course, the hype, the excitement, seeing the baby mm -hmm. for the first time. But actually, when the British public were polled this week, they all said they support Harry and Meghan's decision to keep this private. And I think that uh, I'm glad to see that, that Meghan mm -hmm. is getting that support because at the end of the day, she's the one with the power of the choice. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you talk about secession, where does this baby fall into that line? This baby will be seventh in line to the British throne, and that's as long as William and Kate don't have any more children. I think they've decided they're done, but you never know. You never know. So we've got Charles, William, then George, Charlotte, Louis, Prince Harry, and then baby Sussex. So do you know any baby names? Can you, can you break that? to us on CBSN. Well, so I don't have an inside track on the actual name, but I think when it comes to names, we're looking at a very strong name because that's who Harry and Meghan are. But I also think we're going to see a name that works on both sides of the pond. So for example, something like Eleanor. Eleanor of Aquitaine was a 12th century queen. She was highly influential and well-respected. Eleanor Roosevelt fought for political, social, mm -hmm. and racial justice. And very so natural. that's a very strong figure. Alice Walker, who wrote, uh, the, uh, she the won the purple. Pulitzer yeah. for The Color Purple. Alice, of course, is a long-held family name within the royal family. And then names for another girl's name, like Rose. Doria, Ma Meghan's mother, calls her Flower. England's Rose, mm. uh, Princess Diana, Elton John solidified mm. her uh, as that. So that's for the girls. When we come to boys, Alexandra is the Queen's middle name. Alexander, obviously the masculine form. Alexander Hamilton, one of the founding fathers yep. in the US. So I think there are a lot of names here that work with the British royal family tree, but also have strong roots in the US. I want to ask you about your article that you wrote about sort of looking at the importance of the royal baby's birth. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, a lot of people like to say, I don't care about the birth yeah. of a royal baby, but I think these people underestimate the global reach mm. of the royal family. The queen is head of state to 16 nations known as the realms. She heads the Commonwealth, which encompasses over 2 billion citizens. But I think it goes deeper than that. We're seeing a continuation of history. We're seeing an extension of this bloodline. But this little baby, and this is a huge burden on their little shoulders, but this baby will be the first uh, baby of mixed race heritage born mm. into the royal family. Family. Right. So for me, this marks a turning point in the history of the British monarchy. Suddenly there are going to be millions around the Commonwealth that can identify with this baby's heritage. And for me, that's very progressive. It mm. makes things incredibly exciting. But I just hope that people will recognize that and then move on and let this baby be defined by their humanity, their contribution to society, as opposed to the stereotypes that have become commonplace. It doesn't matter if this baby's seventh in line. A lot of cameras and folks will be watching yes, over the yes. years to see what happens. I do have to tell you, the grocery store Marks and Spencer always does <laughs> <laughs> this butter cookie tin for, uh, are they doing one for, for Prince Harry? Because I, I have a collection of them, you know. I'm slightly embarrassed to admit that. You do true. know, well, the cookies are amazing, the cookies and then you have good. this lovely tin. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because the, the royal family announced that they are not doing official royal baby memorabilia. Really? And so people have become wow. used to that. But I think places like Marks and Spencer's, yeah. all the other shops are going to be jam-packed full of royal baby yeah. memorabilia because people want it. Uh, but there will be no collection issued by the royal family. I'm going to give you five pounds to buy me one next okay, time you're at Marks done, and Spencer. Done. I'll be happy to. Victoria Arbor, thank you so much for breaking it Thank all down you. for us. Well, in